Hello, friend. Today I would like to talk about transcending the ego. And let me just start by telling you about a little cartoon that I saw many years ago. I think it was a Gary Larson cartoon for those of you who remember Gary Larson and his offbeat sense of humor. Well, this was a cartoon depicting a chubby man sitting on the edge of his bed. Obviously, he had just woken up. And he had put a sign right in in front of him where he would sit up as he was getting out of bed so he wouldn't forget this very important thing that he wrote on the sign. And you could tell he had had trouble with this in the past. And so the little sign in front of his face when he woke up said, first the pants, then the shoes. So it was impossible to get the pants on once you had the shoes on (laughs) for this little guy. And thinking of that cartoon, I've often thought that we should have a little sign, right, for when we sit up in bed in the morning that says, ego equals pain. Because when you think about it, all the things that we suffer from, if you trace them back, it's that ego the constriction, the agony, really, of the ego. I found something very interesting in the Bhagavad Gita, and I'm just going to read this to you. I had not really gotten this before, and it just I happened upon it. The self, meaning the soul, God, the, our true reality, the self with a capital S, does not create in men the consciousness of being doers of action. Nor does it force actions on them. Nor does it entangle them with the fruits of action. Delusive cosmic nature is the originator of all these evils. So what that means to me is that God is the doer. God is acting through us. And the more we attune ourselves to him, the happier we will be because we will be acting in accordance with divine law, divine will, divine bliss. And our egos and the thought that I have to have this or I'm the one doing this or I want to be happy, I have to have this, they are mistreating me, all those kinds of ego thoughts are part of delusion. They are not coming from God. So as we explore getting rid of the ego in this little series of talks, let's try to remember when we say, oh, I have to do this, or I want that, or I'm in charge, all the the thoughts of self, try to move them over to the side and say, I will do this if God wills it. I will make these plans. If God wills it, they will happen. I will do my best because we have to put out energy 
And we'll talk more about that too. But try to move the thoughts of self a little out of the forefront and know that God is acting through you and you are part of all that is. You're not encased in this little scrap of matter. You are that divine self, the spirit, the soul, the super consciousness. That's what you really are. And the more you can identify with that reality, that true reality, the happier you will be and the more that everything around you will be compatible with all the things that you want, the harmony, the peace, the joy, the laughter, all of it that our hearts crave as human beings. But the way to do it, the way to get there, to feel that way, to have those experiences that we long for, is to be in tune with God. So think of this little reading from the Bhagavad Gita. Those thoughts of self don't originate in spirit. They originate in delusion. So let's move our consciousness towards our true reality, our oneness with God.